We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. A few weeks ago, we started restoring this rusty stock tank. On this video, we will complete the restoration and finally have a stock tank pool on our land. Definitely check out the first part of this project to get caught up. So, it's kind of hard to tell. It, it may not look that bad in here. And in the sun, it doesn't look that bad, but you know, you, you, it's not even. And the thing is, like, let me see if you can tell. You can see the this, this sort of spots. And, you know, I think it's covered, but I don't know. So we're going to put a third coat on and cry. <laughs> yeah, you can see how it, it's dripped. And I think that might be from... I don't know if it's from thinning down the alcohol or not, but you just almost, you just had to. Yeah. And we really like kind of emphasized this middle crack because we wanted, that's why there's like this line down there. We wanted to make sure inside of there got, got covered. It's a really nice fit finish though. It like mm -hmm. feels nice. So I think that because <clears throat> you're doing such a vertical kind of slick surface, I mean, obviously you know that if you put your hand on our tank, it was not slick, but I just think it is, um, makes it easier for it to drip. And it all, it did run even when we hadn't thinned it, but it ran even more when we did thin it. But then the catch 22 is that you really need to thin it to be able to put it on in enough time because it starts drying almost immediately. They say only do as much as you can put on in 20 to 30 minutes, but I mean, you can feel it almost immediately start to just be really heavy on the brush. So I think, and the thing is up on the crevice on the inside, you really want to get it up in that corner. She's talking about like in here. And that is really brush territory you can't roll it on so because I, I will say when you do the little roller that was I think the best application it had the most even layer but you can't really get up in there with a roller even a small one mm -hmm. so it's just um I it may do its job really well but I don't necessarily think it's like a perfect product for this um you know if you want it to look really nice I've seen people who have had not a ton of people, but who theirs look really solid, like, like, um, it's, but they also have different colors and I've never seen a white one that looks really nice and solid. I contacted, um, a professional in the industry and they told me I could put a third coat on. We had to order it. So we have to wait, which means we're going to have to sand this coat whenever we go to put that sec that third layer on. But that's our plan is to do a third layer and hope that it looks more solid, I guess. Um, but I bought two more cans, so we may be doing pouring this one entire can on the bottom and really trying to coat that really good. It has been a whole week since we worked on the stock tank pool. Um, I had to order more Pond Shield kits and I got them in the mail. I have two of them, two other ones, so that going to bring us to a grand total of four of these after I use them all. We, in between all this, I mean, I had to wait for these, but 
Casey had surgery. Um, she had carpal tunnel surgery. She can't do any more work on the sock tank pool because really what I have to do now is sand um, by hand with 60 grit to make sure there's some kind of grip for these to stick because the epoxy is really slick right now. I've waited until the sun has gone behind the tree so we're practically in full shade. There's a little bit of sun still but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of gather the supplies and I think what I'm going to do is start with the walls. I'm not going to thin the pond shield for the walls because it just ran too easily. You can literally see the drips. And then for the ground, I can't decide if I'm gonna thin it or not. I'm going to use one whole kit, whole on whole pond shield kit. So like all the contents inside of that for the bottom. And really the bottom only has one coat on it and I just don't even know how thick it is. I know that it doesn't seem like it's fully covered in places. So I'm gonna try to use one whole kit for the bottom and one kit for the sides or as much as I need for the sides, but I am gonna start with the sides. I'm gonna be using this 60 grit sand block, sanding block to run across the entire surface of the inside of the stock tank. If you wait 24 hours after coating with this pond shield epoxy coating, you have to sand it so that there's something, you know, it's a little roughened up for the next coat to, to um, actually stick to it. So I'm gonna do my best to sand. I just did a little test sand and it, it uh, doesn't like take it off or anything. It just feels not as slick. So I'm hoping that's right. I am going to check and see if we have any 60 grit um, circle sandpaper so I could just do an electric sand. That would be a lot faster. Um, but if not, this is what I'll use. Ideally, you would put your second or third coat on before the 24 hours is up, but you can't buy Pond Shield in person most in most places. I think you could in some places, but around us, they don't have anybody who sells it in store. So we had to wait for it to be delivered. So definitely make sure you get more than you think you need because according to their square feet on there, we should have had enough, but we, we didn't have even near enough and we're gonna end up using double what we thought we needed. Okay, I am painting on and I just figured something out that's working really well. Um, this has no alcohol thinning it. It's just thick, get a really thick layer on there and only do basically one strip with this. What I've been doing is one strip and if there's a little excess, I can just blend that line on the right side and then get another dip for the next line. It works so much better it, than just like putting, you know, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, that just makes it way too thin, but this is going on way more nicely than what we've done any other time. Okay guys, <laughs> oh my gosh. I have finished putting the coats on. So I have a lot of first impression thoughts and I will do some research and kind of think about this some more and I may be able to do another video with more information. Um, I'm wondering if the colored coats are more solid, like opaque, because I swear this white is so translucent on the sides in some places there are three coats, in some places there are four coats, and you can, it's still translucent. It's crazy. I feel like it would take like seven or eight coats to make it a very opaque white, which is kind of frustrating because the product is not uh, cheap enough. Not that 
I'm not saying that the price isn't right for what the product is, but you would have to buy so much of it to do that, that it wouldn't really even be worth it. Since I bought four kits, the different colors cost different amounts of money on Amazon. So I basically spent about $300 on Poncho. We have had a stock tank pool that was white on the inside and we really like that more than any of the other colors that they have. So that's why we chose that. Um, the thing is, is that self-etching primer, like for anywhere you get it from, it's gray and it's dark gray. It's not like this pasty gray or anything like that. So that um, is really shining through the white. I think it'll be fine. I mean, we're not gonna be putting any more coats on it, but I don't know that I necessarily would recommend the white color. Other things I found, um, a little roller, not a foam roller, but like, a regular paint roller but the little skinny one that was the best hands down way to apply this product the problem is it's this big and you have to do a lot of little strokes i will link exactly what we used in the description box so you know um exactly what i think worked well when we used alcohol to kind of thin out the pond shield it was just too loose on the sides. I think you could use, maybe do that on the bottom, but I will say when we paint, did the alcohol, there were all these little bubbles in the pond shield when we painted it on. And I don't know if that has to do with the alcohol or has to do with a roller brush, but when I didn't use alcohol and I used that little roller brush, there were no bubbles, there were no drips, even on the sides. It was the best way to do it. For some reason, the bigger roller, like a normal roller you'd use on your wall, but the right size, it just did not put the paint on as much as that little roller did. And there's even a line on our walls where you can see where I switched over from one to the other. And the only reason I did that is because I didn't have any more of the little rollers. Basically, every time that you mix more of the pond shield, you have to use a new brush or roller, or you have to clean the one that you used before. So ideally you would just have a bunch of those rollers and every time you would mix the pond shield, you would use a new one. And since you can only mix what you can use in about 20 to 30 minutes, you can't really you do that much at one time. Like I was only alone able to do about half of the stock tank walls, 30 square feet I was able to do by myself before the pond shield started drying. So that's a lot of rollers to go through or it's a lot of cleaning, which means that it'll take even more time because it already takes time to mix your pond shield and then paint it on and then mix and paint, mix, paint, mix, paint. You can't mix everything that you need for the whole project. So all in all, I don't love the pond shield product. Also, they have um, this thing on their product that says that you can call them during their business hours if you have any questions and i did that and i called a couple of times and no one answered so i finally left a message but no one has called me back so i found my answers that i needed elsewhere but that's kind of frustrating that that um is something that they say they offer but then you can't really get them to answer the phone but i will say that when we fill this water with water i don't think you'll notice it that much um especially when the sun shines down on it, but it's not perfect. And I, I do think that because our tank was so rusted, if this does really, it is coated, even though it looks a little transparent in areas and it keeps it from getting rust, that will be awesome. I just wish that the product was more solid and um, because I just think it would look a lot better. The last thing I have to say is that we, we're restoring this really awfully rusted stock tank. I would not recommend that if you have a brand new stock tank that you do anything with Pond Shield. Also, if your tank is two years old and it's still not rusting, I would just leave it. It's way better protected if you take care of your stock tank pool and don't over chlorinate. At $300, you almost could buy a new stock tank. Now this is a 10 foot one, so those are harder to come by. I definitely think that Pond Shield is a solution for certain situations, but I would not recommend at all that you buy a new stock tank and decide that you want it to be white inside and then try to put this Pond Shield on. I just, I don't think it would be worth it. I think you're better off 
just keeping that galvanized coating on. The unfortunate thing is that we'll have to wait like one or two years, one year and then two years and to see how well and how long this lasts. Casey and Savannah, you're in the car. Where are you going? <laughs> Nowhere. <No. laughs> uh, we, the beginning of this video, I started recording after we had come back from Casey's surgery and I did not have a messed up ankle. And so we are going to be completing the stock tank pool, which is just a matter of attaching things and filling it up. But I still can't the walk job around. That Savannah does. Yeah, it's usually would be my job, but it's just really so many like sticks all over our land that it's kind of sketchy um, to walk around and the dogs think we're going somewhere so they have joined us. Every time if if I get in, in and out of the car just on a regular day and I'm not going anywhere but I'm just getting something out of it they they'll jump in the car they're like yeah we're not staying behind. Yeah they they love going with us. Because we're restoring this um, stock tank it doesn't have like a plug in the, I guess it's a drain hole yeah. it's for draining it. Um, so I bought one of these from Lowe's, it's just like a three fourth inch plug. And so I'm gonna direct Casey through putting this in. I mean, I know I can do that. I know, she can. I can do all of it. She just is know. like, I don't wanna. Um, because it's been raining so much, which the stock tank pool would not be filled up at this point, but it's rained a lot and um, because this isn't in, it's not even filling up with water also, um, because it's been a couple, two to three weeks, I don't know how long, since I painted the inside, it has discolored, so it's not super white anymore, it's more like off-white, which is kind of upsetting, but it is what it is. Not gonna coat it again, um, so we're gonna put this in, and then, Casey, when I say we, I mean Casey, and then Casey's going to put, uh, like install the parts on the stock tank, and then Casey mm -hmm. is going to attach a bunch of water hoses from our neighbor's house so we can fill it up, finally. I need everyone to understand that just certain things that's irrational, but I just don't want to do or don't like to do, and it's kind of bratty, I mean, no <laughs> question, like making breakfast. Um, or cooking food of any kind. I I have an aversion. I am not made to take care of people. That's all I'm saying. I was a nurse. Yes, I can't explain it. Um, it's just hard doing everything. Yes, and, and that's yeah. the same for both of us. I mean, when when Casey couldn't use, I mean, she can use her hands more. She's not 100 percent, but even just if I have to take care of everything, like the water, the generator, the animals and also eating and that load is not split up between two people it's really hard and then if it's just if i have to do, i had to do it now she's having to be that person and also Again. getting things for the person so i can't just like will like walk around so if i want to drink casey has to get it for me so it's um it's a lot what uh people that have small children that cannot get their own water and stuff. Hats off to you, that's all I gotta say. Uh, if we get this accomplished and get the pool filled up today, it's just like kind of amazing because it's it's like above and beyond what is uh, what everyone is capable of doing, really. <laughs> At least mentally. <laughs> mentally and- It's well, raining. Yeah. Oh my, are you kidding me? Yes, maybe I'm out of it. <laughs> it's no. sprinkling, we'll see. it did end up raining yesterday and it rained forever and then it rained overnight we got in the past 24 hours except it only started raining about 3 30 yesterday and it is now like noon the next day 3.6 inches of rain which is a lot of rain to get in less than 24 hours 
So, um, it rained a lot. Now, Casey is um, installing parts. She just installed the little drain part that we got. So we will have to start filling it up to make sure that actually works. I just actually assembled all the parts inside for her um, because I'm usually the one who does it. And also, you know, her fingers are just not perfect yet. So anyway, she's attaching the parts right now. And if you wanna see how we do that, we have lots of videos about installing sock tank pools. Um, or you can go to our TikTok at sock tank pool and see like really quick versions of what we do. What is nice about this tank, the probably only thing that is nice about it, uh, is that it already had the holes cut in it. So we didn't have to do that. I mean, we do that all the time, so it's not like it's scary or anything, but it is kind of a pain in the butt and it's just one less step that we had to do to install it. So one thing I did want to say about the pond shield is that since um, I had my accident and I'm on crutches, um, we have not filled the, the pool since it's been at least two weeks, maybe two and a half, maybe three weeks. I Time is weird. I don't know if this is because there's not water in it or because this is just what it does, but when I painted the pond shield on, it was really white. And I think I even talked about, maybe I didn't, but I noticed this and I talked to Casey about it. The, just after like three or four days of it sitting out, the white had turned to more of a off-white, like yellowy white, like not nice looking white. And then I painted on like the new coat of epoxy <laughs> and um, it was way whiter. Like you could literally see the new one going on and it being really white. Um, and now the pool is so, I mean, it's so yellow. It's not, you don't want to look at it and say that's yellow, but it is not bright white. It is like an off white and that's pretty upsetting. I don't know if we had filled it with water sooner, if that would have prevented that. But the thing is not all of it's going to be underwater. So I imagine if that was the thing that part of it would be discolored anyway. And that's kind of upsetting. I think overall, after doing some research that most people, I haven't seen a lot of people paint with white and people who paint with like blue or the light blue turquoise whatever it seems to not have as many problems as I've been having and it I don't I don't know about if people have discoloration problems with that those colors um I think it would be not as big of a deal if like a light blue kind of turned a little more like light turquoisey or you know because it got a little yellow on it but the white it's just so obvious and um we don't hate off white I just wanted it to be bright white because we we did that in our other sock tank pool and the water looks really nice and it's gonna be interesting also I'm videoing Casey um through this window <laughs> uh because that's where the sock tank pool is and there's little doggy nose prints all over the window. So it's really hard to get a good shot of what she's doing, but it doesn't really matter. You get the gist. Check in to see if this is leaking. Let's see. Okay, that is not leaking. This is the plug I had to put in. It's not leaking. It will be Christmas before this is filled up. Well, it's doing all right. This is this got good water pressure. That noise is our generator. It's actually a quiet generator, if you can believe that. I had to connect five hoses. One of them has quite a bit of slack. I was probably only like 10 feet shy of only needing four hoses, but nonetheless, um, I'm grateful to have 
neighbors who will let us use their water because this holds like 1100 gallons so it would have been challenging to just use rainwater for that or you can get water like trucked in um, even if we had a well that would be just a heavy load so grateful for those neighbors Casey's doing some pool maintenance. It's still filling up, but it's starting to look like a real pool. Part of borrowing the, well, getting the water from the neighbors means seeing this guy. That handsome young man is Holiday. And so basically our neighbors just keep that water hose in that bucket and then they just fill it up like over there somewhere they just turn the the hose on over there so I come and take the hose out of here and then drag it over to hook it up to our hoses so yeah the water hose as you can see is there and I drag it up this hill and connect it to that hose. And you can see our land over there. So you can see it had to go all the way down there. And the stock tank is way back there. All right, here she is. Well, I don't wanna say all done because it's all filled up. Um, this is a 10 foot. We plan on putting sand and patio pavers down here. Probably next summer, we'll do a, a deck around it or something. I don't think we'll get into that this year. So we also are gonna paint on the outside and we need chairs, like layout chairs and whatnot. So there's still a lot of work to do, but we're excited that we can get in the pool now. Um, just a couple of takeaways from using this Pond Shield product. First of all, I'm glad that it exists. It is the only paint that I know of that is non-toxic that you can put on galvanized metal and that can be underwater. Uh, there isn't a, mar a marine epoxy that you apparently can use that I think Sherwin-Williams makes maybe. Um, and I don't know anything about that one. I, I do know some people have used it. I don't know about how toxic it is. Anyway, I know people use that sometimes as well. All that to say, not impressed with the coverage. If I were to do it again, I would have ordered an, an, a whole nother one or two cans so that we could have a thicker, like a, a more opaque covering. But... We had a rusted tank, it is not rusted anymore, and it should last many more years. A lot of people want to put it on their brand new stock tank, and I would highly, highly discourage people from doing that. Because in order for it to properly adhere, you have to get that galvanized layer off, which is very challenging, first of all. And if you don't get it all off properly, then it's going to chip. And basically, if, if the pond, if you don't do it right, and it doesn't adhere properly, and it chips, then you have water getting trapped between the paint and the metal, and that could create rusty issues. Galvanized metal is meant to withstand a lot of things. We have friends that are on season seven, I believe, of their stock tank, and they don't have any rust. Um, it really comes down to not putting too much chlorine in your pool and not shocking it. Never, ever, please never, ever shock your pool. And also, uh, checking the pH. If, you're if your water is too acidic, um, that can also cause rusting. So, don't freak out with your new pool. If you start to see rust, if... If for whatever reason you do get rusting, then this is an option. However, the pond paint is not cheap. So you need to figure out how many, how much you're gonna need versus how much it would cost just to get a new tank. So that's kind of my takeaway. It 
will restore a rusty stock tank. And for that, I'm glad. Check out our part one of this video to kind of see how we got the rust off and kind of what it looked like and so on and so forth. Thank you for watching. Come back again next week.